There we go. Take two. We are rolling. Welcome to Vermont Scale Customs. I have not done one of these uh, build videos in what seems like forever. And for a variety of different reasons. Number one, I kind of kind of stepped out of the whole micro crawler scene for a little bit, I guess. Um, way back when I did the build video for this, this was probably in like January or February of 2021. Um, ancient history in SEX 24 times because uh, a lot has taken place since then and basically everybody's moved on from running these rock bouncer rock racer chassis to either running like a 3d printed or fury tech carbon fiber chassis or the new injura uh, carbon fiber rails and stuff like that I mean there is a multitude of stuff that exists now that didn't exist when I first went on to eBay, um, and I just went and checked today, and it was like January 21st, I think, is when I placed the order for this, and I think it showed up about three or four days later. And so, when it arrived, I did a time-lapse build video of it, and put it up online, and that was well received by quite a few people, uh, and then there were a few people that were uh, asking a little bit more for a kind of a step-by-step how-to, and so I recorded that as well. Um, and actually, believe it or not, Hot Racing at one point in time reached out to me directly uh, via email and thanked me uh, for having done a build video on basically a crawler chassis that they released that had no instructions with it at all. Um, and so I actually said, uh, you know, it'd be kind of nice if you guys, you know, would just, you know, kick a little product, you know, somebody's way, uh, to which they, of course, declined. Anyway, um, so enough of my rambling about the history of this thing. Uh, I've run it now for a very long time, and I really like it a lot. Um, but I decided to give one of these a shot. Now this is the carbon fiber um, panels, and then this of course has aluminum plates for like the roof and battery tray and stuff like that. I looked and looked for build videos on this particular chassis on YouTube and absolutely positively couldn't find anything. If you guys know of, of any that exist already, um, link them in you know, down somewhere in the comments if you want. But I just wanted to check and see how many people had covered this ground. And much to my surprise, uh, really not many have. And I think by the time this had come out, um, you know, people like, like I said earlier, people had moved on to other, you know, chassis styles and, and brands and stuff like that. And the whole multitude of, of different things that exist now for the SEX24 that not not even less than a year and a half, a year and eight months ago, uh, none of that stuff was around at the time. Um, even barely really accessories and stuff like that. Only wheels and tires were becoming available. There was probably about maybe two or three different kinds of shocks at the time. Um, but anyway, I decided to grab one of these because I thought it would be a nice change up from running this rock rig. And so I'm going to quickly throw this together. Um, and I'm probably going to have to use a couple of parts off of this rock bouncer as well to, uh, I think, use for cross members on the shocks. Um, the way this is set up on here, I have these bolted through, uh, basically using the steel rods that they have included on this one. So this doesn't have those types of steel rods, and I want to make sure that there are places to be able to bolt you know, the shocks all the way through to as well. So um, sit tight. I'm going to keep working on this uh, on camera and I'll probably just add my little bits and pieces as we go. We like this large tray, sits in the back, this is your battery tray, and then this large square one sits, uh, of course, on the roof. Uh, this is your front mounting plate, which I think gives you two holes to be able to mount, uh, you know, a bracket two for lights or what have you, a bumper or whatever. And this, of course, is your inner tray, or your front tray, which your ESC and everything is gonna sit on. So we're not going to need this hex key, so I'll put that in my pile of other hex keys. And let's possibly look at switching out some of this silver hardware for the black hardware. So let me just go ahead and dump this pile of screws right here. And I will sift through and grab whatever I think is going to work when I need it. I do kind of like of the look of having uh, black screws on the sides of these instead of the silver for the contrast. I don't know, some of you guys may feel differently about that, but I personally would like to uh, make sure that that's kind of matched. 
So let me get my driver here ready to go. And I have so many screws from you know pulling apart or building any you know all these other SCX24 rigs. So hopefully I can put some of these to use. There's a scratch on one of these panels that I did want to make sure sits to the inside. I noticed that when I first opened the package. And this is real carbon fiber, by the way. So if you were wondering at all whether or not, it most definitely is. So, and it's nice and lightweight. It's good and rigid. And I think it's going to be, I think it should be pretty cool whenever it's built. I never really got into the full um, idea of 3D printing and stuff like that. Um, I've had a few... 3D printed parts and pieces and stuff like that that I've used on other machines before that honestly I've had kind of bad luck with. That screw is going to be too long. Note to self, hopefully I have enough to be able to switch over. So we'll try this guy here and I think that's going to be plenty long enough. screw on the side of that and then I'll put the other side on. Since I don't own a 3D printer myself and I haven't really gotten into the whole concept of 3D printed stuff, um, I've kind of shied away, stayed away from the whole um, wave of 3D printing chassis and stuff like that that people have gotten into. Um, like I said, I kind of stepped away from the micros, at least on the exposure of my channel. I mean, I, I run them still occasionally just in my free time and stuff like that. But, I've, you know, I, I kind of stepped out of the way and let all the big dogs, you know, take take over. Um, and there are a lot of good channels out there that really deal specifically with just the micros. And so uh, I didn't really want to be yet another channel that was busy talking about micro RC crawlers. You know, um, that's kind of about when I switched over to doing pretty much just running videos. And so uh, I kind of stepped away from the how-tos and stuff like that. So I think this thing is actually going to be kind of cool, if you ask me. That is the front piece. Here is the roof. There we go. All right. I can always snag some other screws off of this other rock bouncer as well. Since I basically did just this exact same thing where I went through and switched out all the silver cap screws with black ones. So it would be a little bit more stealth in all one color. I do kind of like that look, so I figured it worked. But I'm weird like that. So when I purchased uh, this Rock Bouncer chassis, I was kind of shocked when I saw the amount that I paid for it. Um, I think they currently sell for around 16 bucks. When I purchased this chassis, the original Rock Bouncer chassis from Hot Racing, uh, tax and everything, um, shipping and all that good, good stuff was $48.88 for this chassis. You can buy these now for like 15 or 16 bucks or something like that, which is exactly why I bought this one. Um, I think delivered it was uh, like fifteen dollars and forty one cents or sixteen forty one somewhere in there, and so to me it kind of felt like it was it was a worthwhile change because it was so essentially cost effective, <laughs> uh, cheap dare I say, but it's not cheaply made. It's actually some really nice high quality component parts and stuff here. So looking forward to having it something different basically to run. And it is going to be a little bit lower CG, so it should be cool to see how that performs comparatively. Did I miss the hole here? No, I did not. There we go. be at that point where I need to start robbing screws off of this, in which case let me do that now. I'll take uh, that's a short one. I'll take this guy, which is gonna need to come off anyway. Alright, 
Where was I? Right here. This should be an easy swap for the most part. There's nothing too complicated about this at all. And since the roof is getting pulled right off of here, I may as well just use the, all of the roof screws. Two options. You can mount it either straight or you can mount it at an angle like that. And I think I'm going to go with mounting it at an angle. Kind of tip back a little bit. So let me grab this one screw here. Yeah, there's two different sets of holes. You can mount them, either mount this horizontally straight across to basically match where that tray's at or you can recess it down so the ESC is going to sit a little bit further down and that actually already adds like a little bit of front front weight to this which is kind of nice so that frees up those screws there let me uh let me move on to something else here so I don't take too much off of that and this will kind of work out because I am going to use like I said I'm going to use these steel bars like I have set up here. I mean, I do envy all of the people that have, you know, a ton of money to throw into their Fury Tech setups and stuff like that, four wheel steer and everything. But uh, for me personally, I, I definitely have a multitude of other crawlers to, to maintain and keep running. Plus, I'm terrible about saving money, so if I see something that I want, I pretty much just go ahead and place the order for it and regret it later. Uh, however, every once in a while you get the urge to go ahead and purchase one. And so that's what I've done. I decided to go ahead and take a chance with one of these guys. I figured it might be worth it. And I have them offset with uh, vinyl insert nuts too, so hopefully that won't be an issue either shouldn't need to do that because this kit does include brass spacers I think I see four of them in there so hopefully those are enough to get that offset going I can't remember if I need to take that apart I guess I do so this thing's probably just about ready to fully start dropping out here in a second some links coming apart and everything else I'm gonna try and keep track of as much as possible there keep telling myself this is going to be a really easy swap over and I really don't see why it wouldn't be here so we're going to do the drivetrain first get that all set up and then I'll worry about getting the electronics switched over and I even added a driver in on this one so that's one thing I won't be able to do on this new chassis unfortunately it would be kind of nice to be able to put a driver in here but not the end of the world I do have a stainless steel skid plate on the bottom of this too, but I'm still running, if I'm not mistaken, this one still has the plastic motor mount as well as the original drive shafts. I have never once broken a drive shaft on this thing and I've done, you know, not a crazy amount of crawling with it, but this thing has definitely rock crawled in a variety of different places. But I'm also one to not force my my trucks. Like if they don't if they don't want to do a line, I'm not going to sit there and hammer on that line until it finally does it. I'll find a different route. Can't recall how easy or difficult this is going to be. shaft phasing it right again it's always such a pain in the butt to do it this way very 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 psyched that 
I managed to place an order for the new Injura one inch comp tire, the pins. Um, I had thought that based upon what I was seeing and I was willing to, to, to wait as long as necessary, but uh, Amazon, where I found them, had said that it was going to take about sometime to the middle of September, I think, to get them. And somewhere out of nowhere, uh, yesterday afternoon, I received a shipping notification that they said that they're going to be here tomorrow. So, new pin tires, and then new high clearance links on Friday. So this is basically going to be a full rebuild of this truck. And it's going to be not quite a comp rig, but closer to a comp-ish type of setup, I guess. So it seems like the spacers are probably going to be pretty necessary, and I'm not sure... I think there's just four in here. We'll see if that's going to be enough. I may end up going back to using my... Uh, the nuts that I had in there. So let me get this front axle taken care of first, and then I'll deal with the nightmare that is, because this is not going to be fun. This is always the one that just sucks. I usually like to use a pair of tweezers in order to get this done. So I don't have much time left on this video here. This is going to end up shutting the camera off here in about, a, about three, or, three or minutes or so. So I will start again here in a second. Not even sure this one's still going. Yes, it is. Running two different camera angles, so hopefully I can switch back and forth a little bit so it doesn't make it quite as boring to watch a, a single single angle camera or video. That's always such a tough one to grab. I think as I was saying, like I do kinda envy like all the guys that have, you know, put, you know, brushless and stuff like that in and gotten in on the Fury Tech trip. Um, it looks like, you know, really good stuff and, and, you know, probably where I should be at some point in time, but I just haven't had the money to, to sink into that kind of thing. Um, and I don't generally go and, you know, beg anybody for any kind of product or anything like that or any money to help support the channel. So, uh, it kind of has become, you know, sort of a thing. This is obviously totally self-funded, so I generally, uh, tend to buy what I can and I do look for the cheap thrills whenever I can find them and $16 for this chassis delivered to my door was you know a pretty considerable cheap thrill to make I think that's a pretty good decision so I'm happy with happy with having found what I found for the money that I found it now let's take a look on the other side oh boy I like it already I'm gonna be pretty cool so obviously I am going to run this as flat as I can um, without making contact. I do need to offset the shocks more than what I have spacers for. If I'm not mistaken, there are just four in here. Let me double check. Do I see one, two? Oh, I see none. Um, yeah, I see just four. But there are small nuts in there, but I'm not exactly sure that I would like to use that. I think I can just use these black ones again be just fine. They want you to, to bolt through this and then use the nuts to hold things on the other side for the shocks. I can't imagine a fate worse than anything trying to put a nut on the underside of this right now with its position the way that it is. So we, I, am going to just, I think, try this position right here. It seems to be a nice natural resting place for it. Okay guess I didn't realize that the camera had actually shut off for a moment there. So anyway, uh, where I'm at with this is just bolting the shocks on. I decided to remove the back plate, which is going to make it a lot easier to be able to get to everything. I'm reusing my nuts, <laughs> reusing my nuts to uh, have something to back these with and offset them a little bit from the chassis so that way uh, they're not rubbing. So my shocks don't rub against the side of the 
the frame itself. Hopefully I'm on that hole. Oh no. I just broke a screw. Lovely. Alright, uh, let's try that one more time. Hopefully I can get that screw out of there. What the hell? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Not the thing I want to have happen right now. S.O.B. Okay. Take two. Alright, so it was fun dealing with that little setback, but I got it taken care of. Basically, if you're going to build this chassis, you will need to sort of pre-thread your holes before setting anything. At least that's my recommendation. That way uh, you won't run into the same problem I did. It seems that the carbon fiber, even though it's been drilled out for all the holes and stuff like that, it does seem like it wants to, uh, to have some threads run through there beforehand. Uh, it wasn't cross-threading into the steel rod or anything like that. It was that the tension that was placed on the, uh, on the screw itself. Uh, I was not aware that I was using a little too much force and it just simply spun the thing right off. So basically just sheared off. Um, and I, it's actually tight enough that I can't get the remaining piece of screw <laughs> back out of the chassis. So it will live there forever. Uh, yeah, so just a little setback, nothing, nothing too crazy. Definitely a little pain in the butt, but I will say that I, I like what I see so far. So what I'm going to do next, because this is definitely just slamming right into uh, the tray here, I'm going to move this around. In fact, I might want to leave this out for the time being while I set this next set of shocks up in front. And I'm also pleased to report that the brass bushings that they include with this kit are enough to offset the shocks away from the frame, so I did not have to use the... Uh, and it's just barely enough. I mean, if there's a half a millimeter of room in between, but that's a half a millimeter and that's all it needs. Uh, it's got plenty of clearance. It's not making any contact in between there, so I'm pretty happy about that. Because part of the reason is, is that these were the only four very long silver screws that I had in this, uh, this thread size. I'm not even exactly sure where they came from. I'm not sure if they came off of a uh, an SEX24 build from before or not. But let's take a peek at where these are probably going to relax the most and sit pretty nice and easy. I think I want to just take it right to like the first or second hole here and just go with that. Probably the first or second on the bottom. So now that I know where I'm going to go there, why don't I take one of these guys since it's nice and short. And these are not pre-threaded. Oh, that's the, the second one. These are not pre-threaded in any way. So just keep in mind that that is something that you will need to do. And I'm doing it just as a precautionary measure now. Since I just spun one screw completely in half. So... took an old shock mount screw here with the ball end. It's got a nice short thread set on it so that way you know it doesn't have a bunch of torque, a bunch of twist torque on it. And I'm going into the second hole from the end on the bottom. I think that'll give this plenty of ride height. It definitely sits considerably lower or different I'd say. It's a whole different beast than what the other one is, for sure. I like it. It's definitely cool looking. And I have a feeling that it's probably going to probably crawl very similarly to how the other one did. Um, this thing will, this thing climbs anything. Anything that I've ever put it on and, uh, and run it, it seems to just rise to the challenge. 
with no problems at all. So probably the most capable out of all my SCX24s. Although, I mean, I realize that uh, the Hilux is, is actually pretty capable in and of, it, of itself, but it is a totally different totally different beast because it's also still built on the C10 frame lengths and stuff like that versus this being the, uh, the, the, the deadbolt, if I can speak. It's based on the deadbolt frame lengths, you know, so it's got the shorter set up front. So it's got a little bit different geometry. They do react a little bit differently. And there it is. Cool. Get one more on this side. Now that tray is definitely going to hit the servo. Um, I might need to put a little bit of preload on the shocks in order to keep that from slamming against that all the time. Maybe it will lift itself up a little bit as soon as I put this other shock on, but this other shock doesn't have one of the factory Injura springs on it, and that's one that I actually lost last year doing a video. and. Uh, realized after I was running for a short period of time that this thing was only running on three shocks and still kicking a bunch of butt um, but unfortunately by the time that I discovered that it was only running on three shocks I have no idea where that spring went when I lost it I don't think I'm on where I need to be No, this is not a challenge in any way. It never is. It's always so easy. But I'm capturing it on film for all of the world to see. And hopefully, I am threading. Hopefully, it just tightened down. And all right, suspension is built on this thing. I couldn't be happier. So it flexes, you know, I'm sure somebody could get more flex out of it or whatever. There's definitely no compression in the shocks whatsoever. In fact, it's not even really using the shocks at all except for the front end, which is probably going to unload a bunch up in the front. We'll see how this thing runs, but the back end is definitely just, uh, pretty far away from compressing entirely so it basically is just going to roll I think I may end up moving that rear mount who knows Let's see if I can adjust the preload really quickly here I don't think it's going to matter too much I mean, it's a cool looking rig. There's no doubt about it. I can't wait to see what it looks like with the uh, the pins on it, pin tires. Okay, let me put this plate back on. And like I said, I think I'm gonna have to use top set of holes so it rides flat. It'd be nice if I could hit that second set of holes and angle it, but that's not going to happen either. It'll be interesting to see if this thing really performs any better than what the other chassis does. I was very, very impressed with how that thing performed this entire time. I will say that it's probably climbed some lines that I would have never expected, you know, the thing to be able to climb. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get extension on the shocks at all on the front. It doesn't really seem like it's got a whole ton of motion. It's probably because of the servo wire is 
probably limiting some travel. Yes, it is. Okay. So that servo wire is going to want to... What is it going to want to do? I'm not even sure what it's going to want to do. I have a zip tie set up here, and then I have the wire wrapped around the zip tie quite a few, quite a few times. And I may need to figure out something else in order to make this work. So let me undo a couple of wraps of this and then clip the tie. Uh, you know, it, it articulates maybe a little bit more. In fact, I'd say it articulates a lot more. Oh, I just lost my... Man, I'll tell you what. That is the second time that this shock has come undone on me and I've lost the spring. It will be an absolute pain in the butt to move the shock positions around on this, so I think I'm going to live with the way that it is right now for a while, get used to driving it. I wanted this I wanted it to sit as low as possible anyway, so I think that it's pretty much what it's doing right now. Well, I think it's time to pull the ESC off of this thing. And we're going to clip those zip ties so that way I don't tear the antenna in half. You know, on second thought, I don't think I'll be adding any of these other steel posts to this thing. Nice, even pressure. Try not to force things. That's not nerve-wracking in any way. Really wish. Oh, wait a minute. Hang the F on here a minute. Let's see if there's any way, if there's any room at all to be able to do this. Just got an idea, folks. Everything is still recording. That's good. Capturing all my flubs right on camera. This is awesome. So psyched. You know, I'm very, very surprised that I didn't see any videos of this thing. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I missed them somewhere, uh, but I thought for sure that I searched everything that I could on YouTube and just didn't see anything anywhere at all about them. And I was very surprised by that. We're going to try this method right here. Keep that a little loose for the time being so I can flip it back down here in a second. There we go. So, is there room to get that thing seated there? Yes, there is. Is there still room to flip it back down? Power switch. Oh, beautiful. Love it. That's what we're going to do right there. I think I'd like this even more within the last couple seconds. I've just decided this thing might be awesome. Being able to keep everything enclosed in there is absolutely huge. Still got to figure out what to do about that front end, not want to seat down like that. It's not, not the shocks, or not the springs. It's just something with the geometry of the front end that I got to figure out. It could even be could even still be the servo wire, which is even more of a pain in the butt because there's nothing to be done with the servo wire. Maybe I'll end up just doing away with the springs on the front, but I don't believe it's the springs. I think this is just something is keeping it from 
I might end up weighting the front end somehow. See if there's any extra weight that I can add up there to get that thing to sit down a little bit more. I'm going to top off my coffee here. All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, I managed to get this all completely uh, tucked in and everything, so it is, it's all set. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I do actually like it. I just did a quick test run around my little indoor kitchen course here, and it is by far way more capable. Uh, <laughs> it's It sits very low. It's incredibly flexy, um, and it definitely does some interesting lines that I, I didn't really kind of expect it would do. So what I did was I mounted the ESE on the underside of the roof here. So it's upside. My power switch is now accessible right through here, and hopefully I won't need to change the battery out too much. I'll probably just charge with it right in here. Uh, battery got mounted up front instead of being out back, which really kind of helps bring that front end back down a little bit. I'm not getting a whole ton of downward travel on the shocks uh, for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. I'll have to look into that here in a second. Um, actually, probably because of just the way I have them mounted. So that's really not going to bum me out too much and I don't want to really change that around. I kind of like how far back that sits. And so um, I'll probably experiment around with it a little bit more in terms of like where the shock positions sit. But what I ended up having to do was, you probably can't see it in there, but I folded the servo wire over quite a few times and then uh, ended up hitting it with zip ties. And then it's actually held to the underside of the tray uh, with enough wire for it to be able to extend the front shocks well enough and then also too with the weight hopefully be able to kind of compress it back down. I probably need to lubricate this a little bit more. Uh, it's been a while but I can say definitely um, it runs really well. I'm very pleased with how it performs overall. Uh, it's actually seems like it does uh, does everything that I would hope that it would do. In fact, in fact it's actually pretty quick. So, um, And it does seem to just walk right over stuff a little bit more than what it did before. So, um, All things considered, I think it's a much better chassis. I've never really... I'm stuck. It does load up on the front end a little bit, uh, which is kind of interesting. It'll be kind of funny to see how that works out in the wild. In real world situations but I think right here right now it works okay uh, we'll see how that plays a role in climbing stuff like that but for the most part I'm happy I think it's uh, I think it's a pretty decent chassis do I recommend running out and getting one if you're up for the challenge of trying to figure out how to squeeze everything in under here sure um, I'd say go for it the other the other thing that my may end up trying to do would be to try and put the battery on the underside of this and, and hide it underneath if there's a way. But then what that's going to end up doing is it's going to really throw all the weight towards the back of this and I'd kind of like to have it sitting up front. Because like I say, right now, it's it's sort of, it's got a little bit of resistance it feels like and it's not quite seating down in the front like I really would like it to. So I'm going to try and lubricate some things, see if I can't get things the, the front end loosened up a little bit more. Uh, but other than that, I'm just about out of not only battery power, but I think memory in one of my cameras here. So I'm overall very pleased with how this has gone together. I think I could uh, probably even tighten up this front wheel a little bit, since that seems dangerously loose. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to take it from there. I'm going to go ahead and head out with it one of these days, maybe this weekend. i got a bunch of loose wheels on this. Probably ought to hit these with Loctite at some point in time to make sure that I just don't start losing wheels out on the trail. But um, like I said, you know, for 16 bucks, if you're into cheap thrills and you want a different kind of chassis that's a different look, a different feel than probably what you got, you know, can I recommend it? If you're up for the challenge, absolutely. Um, it's not a perfect build. Uh, be leery of shearing off screws because that carbon fiber does seem to, uh, the pre-drilled holes where the shock mounts go, um, that did seem to give me a little bit of a problem with shearing one of the screws off, but luckily there are a multitude of, of shock mounts to choose from there, so you've got plenty to work with. Um, I'd say overall I like it. It's not uh, it's not bad. It's doing everything that I would hope that it would do, and uh, it seems to be running okay. You know, that's sitting right down where it wants to be sitting. And even if I tried to bring this up in the back, I'm not exactly sure I'd want to do that. I think I like exactly the way that it sits. I like where it's where it's at right now. Um, 
and I'm really glad that I was able to mount the ESC on the underside of the hood. I wasn't sure what I was going to be able to do there. I thought I was going to go with the battery in the back, the ESC in this tray right up here, and it just doesn't work because of uh, the servo. The servo ends up hitting the tray when it's in that lower position. And so um, it just worked out better this way. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far into the video, uh, you're a real trooper. I do appreciate it. Um, of course, hit the like, subscribe, all that jazz. You're on YouTube. You know what to do. Um, thanks again. Thanks for being here. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, however long it takes me to get around to doing another build video for SEX24. So take it easy out there. I hope this video didn't stress you out too much. Um, I know it stressed me out a little bit trying to get everything all built, especially with these back shocks, but my stomach's growling. I got to get some food. Um, have a good one out there. Take it easy. Have fun on the trails.